It's been about a week since Ultra Kaiju Monster Rancher released in both Japan and the Americas, and with it being the first new Monster Rancher game in quite some time, people are very excited. That said, whether you're a brand new player of the Monster Rancher series, or someone coming back from Monster Rancher 1 and 2 DX, I've put together a list of 10 tips and tricks that I think you should know going into the game, and one of them even touches on something that you guys in Europe and Australia should know if you want to get your hands on it yourselves. Anyways, all that being said, I think some of these pieces of information are really cool, so definitely make sure to sit back, relax, and let's dive in. Number one, NFC functionality. Okay, so this is one that you'd probably know if you've been following my channel, but in Japan, they released these Ultraman NFC cards that essentially can be scanned and repurposed into monsters. If you've been playing the game, you'll notice that there's an option for memory boards, which presumably in the West would serve no function. This, however, is not the case because as it turns out, you can use a cell phone that has NFC capabilities, an employee tap card, Skylanders figures, Disney Infinity, etc. as these tap cards to make monsters much like you would with CDs back in the PlayStation era. The catch here is that it does seem that the NFC cards have a lot more liberty than your typical disc, whereas with discs it would always create the exact same monster, with the exact same stats every single time, the NFC cards seem to follow a particular trend. For example, when I tapped my employee ID, it would give me different subbreeds of the same monster, but when I tapped my debit card, it would give me different purebreds. This is something that I do think everyone should know because it adds a lot of fun to the game and acts as a great supplement to the already existent keyword system. Number two, RNG seeds. Okay, so if you don't know, an RNG seed is essentially a number that the game uses to quote unquote randomize certain aspects of the game. If you have the same seed as someone else, the random outcomes will always be the same, for example. This is why you oftentimes hear that computer generated randomization isn't truly random. Anyways, it seems that this new Monster Rancher game actually uses the week to determine what the seed will be. This means that when you partake in certain random events like fusion, for example, that has a chance for different outcomes, you can't simply save the game and reset over and over again until you get a different result because the result has already been seeded. That said, if you do want to save scum to get optimal results for your fusion, simply save, try the fusion. If it doesn't work, advance the week by one at the ranch and then try again. It's more of a lengthy process now, but you could still do it. Number three, keywords and locked monsters. Okay, so this is another one if you've been following my channel, you'd probably know because I put out a PSA video for it. But essentially, in previous Monster Rancher games, if you were to put in a CD that contains a locked monster breed, you would not be able to obtain it and would be given a prompt stating so. This, however, does not translate to Ultra Kaiju Monster Rancher, where if you put in a keyword for a monster you haven't unlocked, it will simply give you another monster instead. Make sure you keep track of the keywords you've used prior to unlocking all breeds because the same phrases could result in completely different monsters once you've unlocked them. Number four, stats. Okay, so this is more for beginners, but let's talk a little bit about stats and how they work to avoid confusion. Life is your health, power dictates how strong physical attacks are, which are dictated by the red skills. Intelligence is the same, but for special attacks, which are indicated by the blue skills. Skill dictates how often you'll land hits. Speed dictates how often you'll avoid hits, and defense dictates how much damage you'll take from incoming attacks. Pretty simple, but I could easily see newcomers not knowing what skill or speed does, cause it's a little different from most games. Number five, guts. All right, another beginner tip piggybacking off of the last one has to do with the guts mechanic present within the game. Guts is essentially the game's version of stamina with your battle skills requiring a specific amount in order to execute. This, however, is not their only function as one thing you might not know if you're new is that guts actually will also influence your accuracy of your moves. So if you had enough guts just to barely execute an attack, it won't actually have the same amount of accuracy if you were to have an abundance of guts. You can pay attention to each skill's accuracy at any time during battle, so make sure you keep an eye on it. Number six, don't sleep on traits. Traits are actually a mechanic that I have an entire video coming out for tomorrow, but essentially the latest installment of Monster Rancher brought forth its own unique system in a similar vein to something like abilities from Pokemon or passive effects from pretty much any RPG. What makes traits interesting in Monster Rancher specifically is that each monster can have up to four traits with the final two unlocking depending on the monster's age. The monster's initial trait will be inherent to its breed, while subsequent ones can be added by obtaining cookies from the bakery and attaching them at your well. Each trait can come with its own different stat buffs and effects, so it's up to you to determine which ones you like. Like I said, stay tuned. Trait video is coming out either tomorrow or the next day. 
Number seven, anger management. Another new mechanic added in the latest entries is the anger meter, which must be maintained throughout the raising process. If a kaiju's anger is maxed out, it will go on a rampage, which could have differing effects like destroying the farm or getting beat up by Ultraman. Activities like drills and errantries will raise anger whilst fighting in tournaments and resting will lower it. There are also some items that can lower and raise it as well, and both scolding and praising it can raise and lower it respectively. Number eight, scheduling tournaments. Okay, this one has been present in the series for a while, but Snack taught me on our stream, and I thought it was too useful not to include, especially for beginners. So if there's a specific tournament you're looking forward to, whether it be the official ranked one or an IMA tourney or whatever, there is actually a way to schedule these. So you'll be reminded on the week they pop up. All you have to do is go to the tournament tab, move to the future, and then hit the corresponding button to join the tournament and you're good to go. Number nine, Legend Cup is OP. Okay, so Legend Cup is basically Monster Rancher's version of a wiki, but on steroids. This website has absolutely everything you could possibly be looking for with regards to Monster Rancher. Guides, whether it be how to unlock certain species of monsters, what keywords to input in order to get certain monsters, a fusion calculator, maps for the adventure section of the game, etc. The owner, aka Monster Fenric, is an avid Monster Rancher fan and expert who has a vast knowledge of the franchise as a whole, so I highly recommend checking out that website for tons of guides on how to basically do anything in the game. Finally, number 10, how to get the game in Europe. Okay, so yes, it is possible to get the game in Europe or Australia, but you're gonna need to do a couple things which could warrant its own entire video, but the simple gist of it is that it is in fact possible to change your eShop location since the Nintendo Switches are not region locked, and as long as you're able to acquire money from the specific region in which you're trying to get the game, whether it be an Asian or an American version, you'll be able to purchase the game and play it for yourself. I will leave a link below in the description to a video that shows you exactly how to do this, but I might put together a monster rancher specific one if that's something you guys request enough and yeah there you go guys those are 10 ultra kaiju monster rancher tips and tricks that you should definitely know going into the game whether you're a newcomer to the monster rancher series or someone coming back from one and two dx that said if you are a fan of monster taming games and you want daily content guides reviews breakdowns etc definitely subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments what kind of content you want to see now and in the near future i've definitely got more guides and whatnot for ultra kaiju monster rancher planned and we got pokemon coming out next month with dragon quest treasures coming out a couple weeks later but in terms of like general monster taming content i'm definitely fishing for ideas from you guys since i want this channel to be the best it can be for the community so yeah if you have any ideas let me know down below you can also check out my twitter my discord and my patreon linked below a special thanks to my patrons especially jim hamilton dro ghost dark persona and exodus and we'll see you guys next time peace